Hello my viewers, it's Dr. Adeshina from Smash Your SML Reviews. Listen, today I want to share with you the top five reasons why medical students fail the USMLE exam. Now, when it comes to the USMLE exam, it's a very, very nerve-wracking exam, right? A lot of students have anxiety. Whether you are in the US, going to medical school here in the US, or you're in the Caribbean island, or you're international somewhere in the world and you're studying for this exam, it is a nerve-wracking exam. And there's a reason for it, right? There's about 37,000 both US grads and also uh, IMG grads that are applying for this residency spot every year, right? And we all started medical school together. You know, everybody's happy singing Kumbaya. But by the beginning of second year, everybody starts to have panic attacks, especially in medical school in the United States. And everybody knows this board exam, they go into this step one manic mode, right? It's called step one mania, right? Because what happens is over the last few years, right, the, the average board score keeps going higher and higher, which is causing a lot of students a lot of anxiety because you're taking out about an average $200,000, $250,000 in student loans, and you're worried that, am I going to get a job? Like, well, that's what it matters, boils down to, right? I'm an ER physician, right? And I know the anxiety and the panic attacks I used to have because I don't know if I'm going to match, right? So I know everything rests on my step one score to get that interview, all right? So because of that reason, because of that funneling effect, right? Now, if you wanna even, compete for higher residency, your, your anxiety is even off the chart. If you want to go to E-Roads, like, hey, thank you for watching this video. Listen, I'm going to be giving away a free ebook on the insider secrets on how to score 260 on the USMLE. Make sure you watch this video to the end because I'm going to be giving you a link to be able to download it. Emergency medicine, derm, ophthalmology, uh, uh, radiology, or you want to go into surgical specialties, they're even ultra competitive specialties. So you need higher board scores. This causes a lot of panic and a lot of anxiety for medical students because their livelihood literally depends on this step one exam, on step two CK exam, right? For US students, they only need step one to be able to get into residency. Uh, and if you don't do well on step one, you have to do well on step two to kind of boost your scores. But ultimately, residency program directors are using this step one scores to screen all these thousands of applications they're getting every year, right? So if that's the case, why do students fail the exam? Well, if you look at the statistics, right, in US medical schools, about six to seven percent of each class every year fail the USMLE exam. Contrast that to students who are international medical students, whereby only about 60% of them actually pass the exam, so almost about a 40 to 30% failure rate from students who are international medical graduates who fail this exam. And I'm gonna talk to you guys about the top five reasons why students continue to fail this exam so that and I can show you why, what you can do about it so you don't fall into that category. So if you're watching this video, and you failed the step one exam, I'm gonna tell you exactly one of the reason why. And if you identify one of those five reasons, there's a solution for me to be able to help you. So the first one is attitude, all right? So the attitude towards the step one exam is the number one reason why students fail the step one exam. So let me explain more. If a US student is studying for the step one exam and they have not been studying during something we call the pre-dedicated study period, which is usually around January of the second year, right? They haven't opened up their first aid book, right? So if you don't know what first aid is, here's the book right here, right? This is the latest edition of the book, right? They didn't get the latest copy of the edition because they forgot that the edition updates every year and there's always mistakes in the book every year. So you always wanna get the latest edition of this book. Now, the problem is the attitude a lot of students have towards studying for this board exam is that they may feel like, well, I know it's a tough exam, but I have not had time to start studying for it yet. So they put it in the back burner, right? And those students usually have time management problems. They have not mastered in their second year of medical school between August in September to always to December, which is the only grace period that you guys have to be able to master how to study for just your classes. Because once you have mastered that, you figure out, listen, if, if, if I spend this X amount of hours, I can still get through all my uh, uh, second year classes, right? So that is the number one reason you first have to master that, right? Now, if you don't figure that out, 
you still have a little bit of break in January, but after that, a lot of your friends and your colleagues are already doing board review questions. They're studying along while they're studying with class. So if you are not in that category and do the pre-dedicated study period and you say, you know what? I'm just trying to get through you know, all my classes right now. You're gonna have a big problem because if you start studying at the end of April, when all your classmates have already done maybe 500, 600 questions from their Q banks, you are falling behind. And now you're trying to play catch up. And with about 2,400 to 2,500 questions to go through, and you wanna get through the Q bank at least twice before taking your board exam, right? You may not be able to get through the entire Q bank the first time around in six weeks. You can, and it's possible, but you may be not able to complete it the second time, all right? Which is gonna maybe affect your score on step one and actually put you at risk of failing the board exam. So that's the attitude for US students. What about international medical students? Well, that's a different story. For IMGs, the, the biggest problem IMGs have is that they have this non-child attitude that they have time, right? They have this false uh, pretense or false uh, um, uh, sense of like, man, I've got a whole year to study for step one, right? Now, there's a problem with that. Step one is a very gruesome exam. This book, as it stands at 2019, right? If you look at the book and you flip it all the way through, it's about almost 650 pages long. That's a lot of information you gotta cram into your brain. Now, when you're studying for step one as an IMG, you don't wanna approach this as like you're studying, like, you know, it's just like a wedding, right? Uh, I'll get to it when I, no, no, no. That's the wrong attitude, right? You have to understand that you only have also a limited amount of scope to cram, memorize, master all this information. So what ended up happening is as an IMG, they start studying, right? You start studying as an IMG, and then you take a break. And then you're like, ah, oh, you know what? I'll get back to it, right? You're not consistent as they study throughout the entire uh, uh, session. So then that's one number one reason. That attitude, rather than saying, listen, I got three months and I'm gonna bury my head in the book for the next three months, study, 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 watch videos, do flashcards, do questions, and I'm gonna have a schedule that I'm gonna stick to no matter what, and I'm gonna take breaks, all right, which is gonna help me prepare adequately for this exam. Sometimes students will say, you know what, I need more than three months, that's fine. But if you have an attitude that you have too much time, what end up happening is you're gonna start forgetting all the information you learned at the beginning. Maybe you studied biochemistry like two months ago, right? And you still have seven months of studying. By the seventh month, you already forgot the glycolysis pathway. You already forgot the fatty acid chain pathway, all right? And that's what happens to your knowledge. Your knowledge starts high and you start to drop down as you study for the board exam. So that is the first thing I wanna share with you guys when it comes to attitude. Now let's talk about mistake number two. Well, it's not picking a test date. What? What do you mean like not picking a test date? I'm not ready to take the test. Why should I pick a test date? That is the wrong approach. Most students always tell me, Dr. Adishina, listen, I'm gonna pick a test date when I'm ready. That's not, that's not how it works. It's reverse psychology. The first thing you want to do in life is set a goal. Because once you set the target, now you've got a small time frame to be able to meet that target. But if you don't set a goal, if you don't pick a date, regardless whether you're ready or not, you're gonna have this non-challenge attitude that you have too much time. Falling back to the rule number one of why students fail the board exam, right? The first mistake, right? So this is what I always tell every student that come up to me. They say, Dr. Adishina, um, I'm taking my step one exam somewhere around, I said, I don't wanna hear that. Pick a specific date. If it's January 4th, it's January 4th. If it's December the 2nd, pick December the 2nd. Regardless of whether you are ready. It doesn't matter. You know why? Let's say you decide to pick December the 10th. It's just for the sake of an argument, right? And you have now three months. Now what happens is that allows you to be able to create your schedule. And then you can see for yourself, how many days do I really have left to study for this board exam, right? And then your heart rate starts to go up because every day you wake up, you realize I am one day less to get towards my USMLE date, right? Now you start studying towards that date, you start taking your MBMEs and then you find out eventually whether you are ready because by the time you take your last MBME two weeks or a week before your actual selected date, if you're still scoring below your target score, then you can push the date. You can always call the MBME office and tell them, listen, um, I'm gonna push my test date, you gotta pay some money for it depending on what time you change your date, but at least you're working towards it. So that 
what that does is it prevents you from having that nonchalant, complacent at attitude a lot of students typically have and allow you to stay focused and laser intense. Got it? Good. Let's talk about mistake number three, studying for too long. I see this all the time. Students say, I'm gonna study for eight months for the board exam. And I say, that's a long time. For example, US medical students typically study for about eight weeks at max, right? Dedicated study period. Because what the studies have shown is that once you cram information for a short amount of time, right, the longer you don't see that information, the more you start to lose that knowledge out of your brain, especially if you're not reapplying it. So what I tell students is there's a pre-study period, right, and then there's the dedicated study period. During your dedicated study period is where you kind of amass all that knowledge inside the first aid book or your step two book, and then you go, as soon as you hit your target score, you're going to spit it out and you run. Okay, but a lot of students, what they do is they start studying, they take too much breaks, right? And then they keep extending and extending and then they find themselves forgetting information that they have learned in the past. And this is what typically happens. You will forget the information. It's a lot of information. Step one, for example, is at least 30% memorization, 60% mastery and understanding, and the 10% is like basically you have to fully understand the nitty gritty of a lot of mechanisms by 60 to 70% of the test and understand the pathophysiology and integration. Okay, so don't study for too long. Once you set your date, study as fast as you can, get the information in your brain, go and take the test, all right? Now, how about mistake number four? Mistake number four is jumping from too many resources. I see students all the time. They have Pathomer, UWorld, Smash USMLE, and then their friend tells them, have you seen Amboss? And then they buy Amboss. And then they heard about Lecturio, and then they're gonna buy Lecturio, right? And Kaplan. And they have all these books all those videos and they don't know what to do with them. <clears throat> Just because Anki Deck works for someone may not work for you. Just because somebody's watching videos may not work for you. Just because somebody's you know, just doing question banks and because they say this question bank is better than that question bank, it may or may not work for you. It's not about how many resources you have, it's about how you use it. So what I do here at Smash USML is we actually train students on how to use the resources they have. Regardless of what resources most students have, if they come to Smash USML Reviews, and if you go to smashusml.com, you can learn more, right? What you will find out is that we show you how to use the resources you have in conjunction with our resources because regardless of what resources you have, it's how you know how to use it. It's, this is the perfect example. If you buy a brand new BMW, right, and it's got all this button inside of it. If you don't know how to push the buttons or what those buttons do, what good is it if you drive a nice fancy car, right? That's exactly what happens to students when they're studying for board exam, right? They're overwhelmed, they're jumping, they study for a couple of days, they jump over to another resource, and they jump over and over and over, and eventually they get so overwhelmed because pe people are suggesting so much. What you want to find out, the solution to that, is at the beginning of your studying to have a strategy. You have to know yourself. You have to say, am I a kinesthetic learner? Am I a visual learner? Am I an auditory learner, right? And once you've identified basically the best way that you study with, right, then you can start using the resources that match your study skills. That's basically how it works. If you don't do that, you are going to be overly frustrated, you're gonna be overwhelmed, and that will lead to you getting frustrated and throwing all these resources away and eventually failing the board exam. Another one, which it would be number five, is wasting QBanks, all right? Wasting QBanks is one of the top reasons students fail the board exam. So a lot of your friends have probably told you this word, right? Hey, listen, I just used UWorld, First Aid, and Pathoma, and I got a 260. You've seen that on Reddit, and you've seen that on you know, all these forums online, right? So you do the exact same things. So why are students still failing the boards? Well, there's a reason for that. They don't tell you the full story. They don't teach you how to use the question bank. They don't teach you how to effectively learn from these question banks, right? So students go into this question bank, they start selecting answers, they just randomly and nonchalantly read the uh, correct answers, and they're like, oh my God, you know, I only got 40%, I only got 20%. They're stuck on the score and then they waste the entire QBank and they didn't learn anything, right? They don't know how to take notes. They don't know that there's specific strategies that you're supposed to use. For example, if you're reading a question bank, right? A question bank is just a learning tool. It's not even, uh, you know, students have this notion that using the question bank is for them to be able to just read the information and know how to answer questions. No, if you turn that question bank into a book, that's all you need to know for the exam. 
But then you still have to have a background knowledge, right? You need to understand the pathophysiology of diseases so you can identify things when you're studying in the question bank. But here's the thing. You have to recognize whether you have a knowledge deficit, which is a gap in your knowledge. For example, if you don't understand endocrine physiology, like the hypopituitary adrenal axis, if you still don't understand that path of how cholesterol is being metabolized to aldosterone into cortisol and eventual uh, androgens, guess what? You always get 20, all these 21 beta hydroxylase questions on the, on the board exam wrong. So what I usually tell students is that make sure you fill your knowledge gaps. Then when you're using your question bank, you need to fully understand how to use the QBanks. And if you want to learn more, I have a click in the video below that you can click more on how to learn about it. Okay, now I'm gonna show, give you just a few more tips before we round up this video. This is the best advice I'm gonna give you before you study for your step one exam. Listen, your MBME score report is the ultimate reflection of whether you're gonna do well in the USMLE or not. The reason is because I've met thousands and thousands of students that failed the USMLE, and they consistently repeat the same mistake. They'll take MBME 18, 20, 21 and 22, and the score is about around 180, 185. And guess what? They convince themselves that they are ready to take the test, and then they go and take the board exam, thinking they're gonna score a 210 or 205 on the actual exam. No, the MBME assessment test is by far the most accurate and the most precise question bank that will test your knowledge of whether you're ready to take the USMLE exam. So I'm begging you while you're watching this video, before you take your USMLE, if your target score is 225 or 236, and you're still scoring 205 on your MBMEs, you're not ready to take the test. Don't do it. And if you don't know how to increase your score, reach out to me directly, reach out to our company at Smash USMLE. I'm gonna put a link below in this video so you can click on it. And we will help you identify the strategies, show you how you can retain the knowledge, how you can get the concepts that will get into your brain in such an easier fashion, and how you can recognize how you can get higher points on the board exam. So I, I, I do consulting all the time with all the students and I tell them, listen, why did you take the board exam before calling Dr. Adeshina? Because you thought you got it all figured out. No, what you should have done is come to Smash USMLE reviews and we will have shown you how, because the MBME has already identified that you're weak in certain areas, but you don't know how to approach how to study the right way. And that's what we do here at Smash USMLE. We coach you on how to study the right way. We get you tutors to be able to get you your higher board scores. Not only that, we give you the resources and show you exactly how to use the resources so that you can get the score you want regardless of what kind of residency you want to match into, all right? And last but not the least, I'm gonna give you this extra bonus. I know that I'm gonna talk about five, but I'm giving you this one extra bonus. Students often shoot for low scores. That's another reason why students fail, okay? That's the extra bonus I'm throwing in this video. When you shoot for a lower score, you're setting yourself up for failure because the amount of work it takes for you to score 245 is not the same amount of work it takes for you to score 205. And students who consistently say, I just want to pass the USMLE, that is the worst attitude you can ever have. Back to attitude again when you're studying for this board exam. Because if you shoot for a low score, you're most likely going to fail the test. All right, so whether you're an IMG or US grad, this video should be able to show you all the top seven things in total, because I gave you top five in those last two, to be able to identify whether you are at risk of barely passing or failing the USMLE exam. Now, if you want to learn more about how to get help on how to study for step one, if you need help on coaching on how to be able to get a 240 and 250 on the USMLE exam, you can reach out to us. I'm gonna put a link here below under this video. Just click on the link below, all right? It's gonna take you directly to our website and you're gonna be able to sign up, all right? We give you a free access to our free eBooks, all right? You get a free access to Insider Secrets on how to study for uh, uh, for the USML Step 1 exam and how to score 260. It contains all the MBME secrets that they don't tell you about. Also, I'm going to also give you access to be able to get a 15-day free trial to be able to try out our platform. Oh, it's literally free, all right? And if you need to reach out to me, I'm gonna put the link in our contacts below for you guys to be able to call. Just call our company and we will be able to help you, all right? I hope this video was very helpful for you. Don't forget to sh also, don't forget to subscribe. Click the link below to subscribe to our channel. You're super awesome. Till I see you guys next time, you have an awesome day. This is Dr. Adishina from Smash USMLE. I'm here to be your board insider and help you become the best doctor you can possibly. You're awesome. Have an awesome day.
Bye bye. Hey, thank you for watching this video. I hope you truly enjoyed. Listen, if you want to watch more videos like this and get a free copy of my Insider Secrets for scoring 260 on the USMLE, this book is packed with all the secrets that the NBME doesn't want you to know. I want you to click on the link below to be able to download and get a copy. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You're awesome. Thank you for watching.